Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And this one is a little bit of a different one. I wanted to mix things up a little bit. This one's talking about, in general, 10 things that will help your attacking greatly if you implement these things into your attacking uh, routine. They aren't specific to any town hall level or any type of attack. They're things you can do every time you are going in to, uh, to try to be successful in a Clash of Clans war attack. And some of these you guys might already know, but some of them, if you probably don't know, you haven't tried out before. And I guarantee if you use a few of these that you didn't use already, your attacking will not be a lot better, but it might just be a little bit better and it could save you in certain circumstances. So let's talk uh, about what I mean specifically, starting with number one, turn on your do not disturb. Um, can't tell you how many times I've heard people get a phone call, get a notification, and I don't even have my do not, do not disturb on for this video, um, which is kind of sucks, but uh, make sure it's on when you're at least doing a war attack. You do not want something like that to happen. Very practical, but very true. Make sure you have that uh, feature on, and make sure you go to settings too, and turn on the... Uh, uh, lock non lock screen do not disturb so it applies to when your phone's actually open and you're using it not just when your phone's on lock because you have to actually change that in the settings um, number two when you're before you do an attack try to do a friendly challenge or at least a attack in the multiplayer to see where your troops are in the in the uh, bar at the bottom of the screen that way you know how you're going to have to scroll from troop to troop to deploy them. It's better to do a friendly challenge because you can actually drop your troops. In the multiplayer mode, all you can do is kind of look around. You don't want to actually waste your troops typically. But the friendly challenge, you get all those troops right back after you use them. So if someone can give you a base before you attack, that'll make it even better so you can uh, check, you know, how how long does it take to deploy these, this many troops? Even a similar base is even the best if someone has a you know a similar town hall ten type base to the one you're about to attack. Uh, number three, check for stuff in the corner. Um, this is another thing that you think people would do more, but they just don't. We see it even in Genesis a lot. People are not accounting for the builders huts. And they're a common thing at pretty much every Town Hall level for people to throw those things in the corner, especially Town Hall 9 and 10. So make sure when you're doing a 3-star attempt, or I guess a 2-star attempt also, um, any attack, make sure you look for those Builder's Huts. They're going to be important either way, and you got to account for them with Archers or something. Uh, otherwise, you could feel really stupid after an attack, potentially. Okay, uh, number 4. And this one, I think, is one of the most important ones that I probably haven't even mentioned before in another video. Watch the replay or, or multiple replays before the attack, like right before. Because, you know, when you just start to plan at the beginning of your planning phase, you're going to watch the attack or the multiple attacks on it. But do it one last time before you actually attack and don't fast forward at all. Because when you're... When you're watching it, you know, to see where certain stuff is, oftentimes you're fast forwarding, you're skipping through stuff, you're not paying attention to certain parts. Watch every part of it. It's only three minutes. You're not going to, you know, nothing's going to happen in those three minutes. If you have the time, wait, be patient, watch the, for the three minutes, the six minutes, if there's two attacks. And that's another thing. Check how many attacks were on the base. If you haven't been, you know, in the war, you know, checking in that much. There might have been three attacks on the base, so watch every one of them and watch them all at least once in regular motion uh, because there's small things that you might catch that you otherwise wouldn't have been looking for had you fast forwarded to what you thought were the important parts of the attack. But watch every part of the attack one more time before attacking to make sure there's nothing you're missing about the base. Um, next thing here, uh, <clears throat> sorry, trying to find it here. Um, Oh yeah, okay, when you hit the attack button, wait for the first 15 to 20 seconds. I know it's kind of nerve-wracking. You see the spectators coming in on the top left corner. Uh, you want to get those troops down. But this is your only chance when the clock has not started, yet you're in that window. The base is there, the troops are there. F plan out your first, let's say, four or five deployments. You know, if the first step is dropping a wizard there, dropping your queen there, dropping the four healers on her there, and dropping a golem there, plan those out. Look at where each of those is on your troop bar. That way you can save time because you'll get all of those things down really quickly, especially if they're all happening right at the beginning. You can get all that stuff going really quickly and you don't even have to think about it. Don't make yourself kind of start reacting 
be uh, proactive and use, you know, don't use all 30 seconds because then the countdown thing comes up and it gets in your way and you might even waste time if you don't start exactly when it hits zero. Use the first 20 seconds, I'd say, to plan out your first few steps. I know you've gone through them before, but this is the only chance you'll have uh, with your the base there, with your actual troops there, with everything being how it is. Plan out um, in those 20 seconds what your first few deployments are. Just go through it one more time in your head and uh, make sure you know what the deal is so you don't waste any unnecessary time. Use those 30 seconds to your advantage, or at least about 20 of them. Uh, this one, uh, number six, pretty uh, cliche. Make sure you have all your troops, um, especially Town Hall 11s. Grand Warden, should he be on air mode or ground mode? Because those are two different things. You don't want him on air if he is uh, coming in with a Witch Bowler attack because he'll just, he'll be hitting a Seeking Air Mine. And you don't want him on ground because he'll get taken out by cannons if you're using a La Luna attack. Pay attention to that. Also, the biggest mistake at Town Hall 9 and 10, not bringing a jump or not bringing <clears throat> wall breakers. I don't know why those two things, but I guess people don't focus on how they're actually getting their troops through the base. So make sure you have everything, including the jump, including the wall breakers, and including the warden with the correct uh, um, elevation off the ground, I guess you could say. Okay, uh, number seven, check for the battery on your phone. Not just for like, you know, you're going to run out of battery, but is there going to be a 20% notification coming up? Is there going to be a 10% notification coming up? I actually don't know if the Do Not Disturb takes oh, takes care of those things or not. They might still come up. I'm not sure. So if you're at like 21%, plug your phone in or wait for it to go down to 20 because that is so annoying uh, if that comes up during an attack and it basically takes about three or four seconds that you are completely helpless and you have to get rid of that before you can do anything. So watch out for the battery. It's a killer. Um, backup plans. Those are super, super important. This is uh, number eight tier. Have for each big step that could potentially go wrong, have a backup plan. If say to yourself, if my queen walks the wrong way, what am I gonna do? And if it's I'm completely, you know, I'm finished. That's not a good answer. You want to have some kind of hope. Um, if something that is foreseeable to go wrong does go wrong. Now, if it's Something that you could never anticipate, then you can never anticipate it. But there's certain things in your attack as you're planning it, you're going to be like, well, it's possible the giant bomb could take out my uh, my witches here or whatever as we look at this attack. Or it's possible this could happen. I don't know. I'm just trying to make stuff up. It's hard. Uh, but the main thing are queen walks and potentially what's in the CC. Those are big things to have contingencies on, especially if you don't know what's in the clan castle already, or if you haven't already had someone do the same queen walk. If it's a new frontier, have a backup plan, because sometimes the other stuff is good enough that you can still get the three star despite having to adapt on the on the fly, kind of. Um, number nine, you need to have certain what we call like time thresholds, or at least what I call um, you want to have time thresholds in your attack when you're planning it. Basically, this is to keep you from running out of time. It's If you're doing a multi-stage attack, you want to have a point where you say, okay, if I see that we have a minute and a half left, these hogs are going into the base no matter what. That is a good idea. And you, you want to have a little bit of flexibility. Don't send the hogs straight at, at the queen if she's about to go down like three seconds later. But at two minutes, unless there's a huge reason not to, send in the hogs or send in the whatever. I don't know. At two minutes, send in your quick kill squad because you don't want like a queen walk to take forever. I've seen bases get crushed, but just the person run out of time at 96% because their queen walk took so long. It got so much value, but it took forever. And he had a ton of troops left up. There was no point of waiting. Um, sometimes you got to sacrifice a little bit of value for a little bit of time because running out of time uh, sucks almost more than it does to have your troops die. And it's not a good idea to say, you know, when the queen gets to this point in the base, then I'll send my stuff in. If it's a short queen walk or something, yeah, maybe. But there has to be a certain threshold where, hey, I got to get this going, even if it's going to cost me a little bit of efficiency or some troops. Get it going. Get it in the base. Plan out ahead of time how much time you're going to need. And if it's, you know, two minutes to take out the rest of the base, say, hey, these troops need to get in the base at two minutes. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble. 
good idea to do. Finally, uh, pre-cleanup. This is kind of an interesting concept. I think I've talked about this before, but if there's certain parts in the base that have like three or four buildings that an archer can take out without being targeted, just put the archer there at the beginning of the attack. You know, don't save your cleanup troops to the end if you can help it. Drop an archer, drop a minion where there's a group of like three or four buildings. Let them already start on cleanup at the beginning of the attack. Now on Town Hall 11, two-star attempts, that's going to be a given because the eagle um, can take out anything on the map once it gets going. So you need to get certain troops around the outside to get your 50% at the beginning of the attack. But also for three-star attacks, you want to um, start with taking out some outside buildings not if it's only one building it's not worth it then but if you can get like two or three or even four buildings then you should do it then you should drop the archer the minion whatever it is and get the cleanup started also if you're deploying like hogs or something or balloons drop a wizard or a minion right behind them as soon as you do it that's always the um the part of the base that seems to be left up the longest you want to start clean up where your troops enter the base especially if you have defensive targeting like balloons or hogs as soon as you drop them drop a wizard drop a minion behind them plan on doing that it can save you the attack by getting cleanup started as soon as your troops go into the base rather than waiting to the end of the attack when it's already too late. So hope these tips helped. A um, little bit of a different video, like I said. I wanted to give you guys some stuff to think about, and let me know if you like these types of videos, just talking about some stuff with some attacks in the background every once in a while. Kind of a fun video to do at least. So those are the 10 tips. Hopefully you guys can use them, and they might just save an attack for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.